Hey everyone! Today I'm going to talk about what trauma-focused cognitive behavioral therapy is, also known as TFCBT. This will be a great video for other therapists, clinicians, psychologists, but it also will be really good for parents, foster parents, um, social workers, county workers. So I hope this video reaches lots of people because it will be packed with full, it will be packed with lots of really good information. So what is TFCBT? TFCBT is a therapy modality that is used with um, kiddos that have endured significant trauma. So I'm just going to kind of talk quickly about the criteria for this therapy approach. So kids that are 3 to 18 years old fit within the model of this program and kids that have experienced at least one um, significant traumatic event. So that could look like a fire, a tornado, a break-in, a car accident, um, a fight at school, something big that happened in their life. And then they have significant post-traumatic stress symptoms that interfere with daily functioning. And so that sounds like um, a really big criteria to meet. It actually, um, it, I mean, it is big, but it actually comes in forms that I think we oftentimes don't relate to it. So for example, avoiding um, the people surrounding that event or avoiding talking about the event, having nightmares about the event, um, things like that where they're really like avoiding that type of um, situation or situations that even remind them of it um, are some of those criteria. So um, if their eating is off, if their sleeping is off, things like that um, are some telltale signs that this could possibly um, be a modality for the child. So the child doesn't have to meet criteria for PTSD to benefit from um, uh, TFCBT, if you will. That's a lot of acronyms. Um, but so if this is um, a little bit too in the weeds for some of you, please just let it fly by you. This will be a, a quick requirement introduction. Um, but for those of you that this is important, um, keep listening. So um, the child may have other trauma-related problems, such as school problems, behavioral problems, symptoms of depression or anxiety. And so a lot of times kids that have um, endured a traumatic event will appear as if they're anxious or depressed. A lot of these kids are being diagnosed with ADD um, or oppositional defiant disorder. And so really, really taking a deep dive and a deep look um, into what's the cause of the symptoms and the presentation. Um, and participation of a supportive caregiver is strongly encouraged for optimal outcomes. So the younger the child, the more that this, at least for me as a clinician and therapist, is um, either recommended or strongly encouraged. So the younger you get on the scale of 3 to 18, it becomes recommended. And the higher up you get, um, we can we can get creative with who that looks like. Um, so kids don't always have a parent that's able to participate in therapy or appropriate to participate in this type of a therapy. Some kids are in foster care, some kids are in group homes, some kids are in residential. So really taking a peek at who the attachment figure can be um, and really, really um, for optimal change to occur, we really need an attachment figure. And so I would argue that the therapist can act as an attachment figure if necessary, um, but probably not best case scenario, but we don't always get best case scenario. So um, this is not good for kids where the child does not have a trauma history or was too young at the time to recall. So we have lots of kids where they were maybe placed into foster care at the age of two or three or, or one or even before that, that don't recall that. So traumatic things have happened, but they don't recall them. This isn't the therapy type for them. Um, the child does not have significant post-traumatic stress or trauma-related symptoms. Just because a child was in a horrific car accident doesn't mean they have traumatic symptoms. And so really addressing where that child's at, not where the parent's at or the caregiver's at with it or what we think the kid should experience, what they actually are experiencing. And the child has severe cognitive delays or de deficits. Um, autism spectrum disorder would be one of them or other problems to the extent that they would be unable to benefit from this treatment. Um, problems to be considered are imminent safety, um, disruptive behaviors if they're too severe um, to do this therapy, um, which I would argue that severe needs to be extremely severe um, for me to not continue with TFCBT. Lack of supportive care, caregiver um, or substance abuse are all reasons we um, 
need to consider if this is the right approach for them. So those are the criteria for TFCBT. Um, I had my little notes here, so that's why you guys saw me looking down. But I just would like to take a minute. I like to keep my videos under 10 minutes, so I would like to just take a minute to explain kind of what happens during TFCBT. So if you think you're a candidate or you have a child who's a candidate or know somebody who might be a candidate, here are some of the um, things that will happen in TFCBT. So the beginning is all about um, getting to know each other and building rapport. Because in order to tell our story and tell it accurately or tell it with as much feeling as we really have, we need that relationship and support. So um, if you've ever told like a story about you to people who you don't know very well, you probably don't dive all the way in. You probably don't tell all the nitty gritty details that you know. And so that is why it is so important to be able to um, build rapport and to get to a point where a child feels like they can share that stuff. They're not going to get in trouble for it. They're not going to be judged for it. That actually it's a way for them to heal. And so um, I like to describe TFCBT as um, having a scab and continuously picking that scab. And so kids who have trauma where it's never actually worked through, that's what we're doing. So um, they have a scab every time something else traumatic happens or big feelings or big emotion ha emotions happen, we pick that scab, right? Um, and after time, that scab gets so deep, so infected that it needs a significant amount of time to heal. TFCBT is that significant amount of time. This is not a quick therapy approach. This is literally bandaging up that wound, um, healing the infection, the scars, everything that comes along with it. We are literally saying we're not going to pick at that wound anymore. We're going to clean it out. TFCBT is going to clean it out. We're going to do an intense clean of that. And then we're going to bandage that baby up and we're going to heal it. And so that's kind of my view, my brain view of what TFCBT is. So we spend time um, building rapport. For some kids, that looks like a couple sessions. For some kids, that looks like a lot of sessions. Um, so that's the first piece of it. The second piece of it is making sure that kids are able to identify their emotions. Like, so that's happy, that's sad, and then apply them, right? So I felt happy when, when I'm acting this way, when I'm kicking my feet, when I'm stomping, when I'm slamming doors, I'm feeling blah, not just, not just necessarily angry, I'm feeling alone, I'm feeling scared. You know, what are those feelings? Um, what does it feel like to feel jealous? How do we react when we feel jealous? So able to identify emotions and then also explain how you're feeling in your body. The next step um, is um, is um, relaxation. Sorry, I just blanked my mind. Is relaxation. So um, lots of work on when we feel heightened, these are the things we can do to lower our anxiety or our stress or those feelings, right? Uh, relaxation techniques don't work for everyone. So I have lots of people like, okay, teach me guided meditation. I'll teach it. Sure, I'll teach it. It doesn't mean it'll work for you. Some people like to go on walks. Some people like to um, read a book. Some people like to fidget with fidgets. Some people like to do puzzles. Like we really have to define what relaxation is like for that kiddo. Um, during this whole time, we're doing psychoeducation. So um, what is what is trauma? What does trauma look like? What does trauma feel like? Working with parents on what trauma looks like and feels like and normalizing um, what the kid's thinking or feeling is oftentimes related to traumatic events. And so psychoeducation that whole time. Um, and then we start getting into their actual story. And so if you guys have ever heard of like a trauma story, that's this right here. So the trauma story begins with who the kid is, right? Um, who they are, how, how old they are, what school they go to, what friends they like, what they like to do, what makes this person a person. Then we get into the happy times because all kids have happy times even if they don't seem like the happy that we think they should be. All kids do have happy times. It just might take a while to explore and to get to, okay? So we work on happy times, which can be far tougher um, for kids than we think. So we work really in depth on what that looks like. What did it look like? What did it feel like? What did it smell like? Um, what were your feelings surrounding it? What were other people's feelings surrounding it? And so we list very specifically in depth um, a couple different times where they felt happy and what that looked like. And then we get into the hard stuff. Then um, we take scenario by scenario of whatever that trauma looked like. So some kids, it's a car accident or the tornado or the burglary, right? Some kids, they live traumatic events for many years. We call that complex trauma. So those kids have 
far more than one story to tell in the difficult part, right? It might have been not having food and what that felt like when you opened the cupboard. It might have been sexual abuse, what that looked like, what that felt like, what that smelled like, right? Um, it might have been physical abuse, what that looked like, what that felt like, what that smelled like, okay? Feelings around it, feelings you still have today from it, right? Um, things like neglect being... Um, uh, not allowed to eat food, uh, not allowed to do things other kids get to do, not having clothes, having food withheld from you for punishment, things like that, okay? So you can tell this would be a really tough thing to do um, when we go that in depth. We're really reliving it. We're reliving the trauma the best we can get them to. We want them to heighten and come back down and heighten and come back down during all of our sessions during this time. So we tell caregivers, it's going to get worse before it gets better. We have to get through this point, but we have to do this to get through it, right? So, um, and that's where the relaxation skills come into play. When they're, when they're really heightened, we know how to start calming. We know what to do to calm, right? So um, we go through their um, trauma story and we always end um, with their future, right? Because we are not the experiences that happened to us before that shapes the person we are, but that's not who we are right? And so what do you want life to look like? What are your goals? What do you want to tell other kids that have been in situations like this? Because other kids have been. What are your words to them? How can you encourage and lead the other kids that are feeling the same way that you felt when you started? So that's a synopsis of TFCBT. At the end, we always hold a graduation. I let kids pick what food is there. I let kids pick who they invite, who um, they want to read their story to, and they can read their story or I can read it for them. Either one is totally fine with me, um, but to allow people who have earned the right to hear their story. Sometimes that's one person. Sometimes that one person is hard to pick. And sometimes that's 10 people, but the kiddo gets to choose. So um, if you guys are curious about who is trained in TFCBT, I'm going to do another video on that in the future. So please look for that um, about what the difference is between trauma trained and trauma informed and trauma certified and all these acronyms we throw around. But many of us have no idea what they mean. Um, I will do a video on that. So look for that. But for the meantime, if you want to figure out who is nationally certified in this approach, please go to www.tfcbt.org. I believe it's .org. Yes, it is. And you can go to like find a provider and you can narrow it down by state and see who's in your state that provides this sort of training. The training is extensive. Um, and I will talk about that in another video. So um, please know if somebody says they're trauma trained or trauma informed or something like that, it is not the same. So um, make sure you're asking, are you nationally certified? In TFCBT, this is a national certification. Um, not just anybody is trained in doing this um, type of therapy. So please ask your questions below if you have any. And um, make sure you like and uh, subscribe to this page, please, if you like it. Okay, thanks, guys. Bye-bye.